So it's like this represents, right? So it's a representative example, right? So that's why you would do that, right? So that's what we mean by an extended example. Um, and number seven is another one. Choose an event you believe illustrates a less than admirable moment in your life. So that's another one where you're just using one example. So, you know, um, you know, maybe, you know, here, if I were writing about this, says maybe I would say that, um, if, you know, if I, I could say something like, you know, I have a hard time finishing, um, you know, certain things when I get very stressed out, uh, you know, and the worst time this ever happened to me was X, Y, Z. Right. And so I'm going to use this one one specific moment in my life to illustrate perhaps, you know, a flaw in my character. Right. Or just maybe illustrate the worst time in my life or a time that led to maybe great change in my life. Right. But I'm just going to give this one example. I'm not going to give multiple examples. Right. Um, other times, though. OK, so let's go back to but other times you're going to use multiple examples so some of those essays are asking you to choose three friends or family members and show how they represent you know what it means to the, the best and worst about what it means to be an american right so you're just going to choose three people on each body paragraph will reflect one person and they so you're going to choose a characteristic of what it means to be an american like maybe independence Stub, maybe stubbornly independent, right? You're going to define what that is, and then you're going to show how this one person you know really exemplifies that and talk about how they are and what they do in a way that really shows why maybe it's a problem, but also why there's some good qualities as well, right? So that's how you would work it if you're doing multiple examples. And the next paragraph would be another, a different aspect of being an American or whatever, right? Um, the other part, you had something about um, ritual ceremonies or celebrations and the types of people who participated in it. So use the participation's examples to support your point, make a point about the event. So again, in this one, you're going to be looking at three, three points, that, a point that you want to make about the event. So if you want to talk about Okay, I'll, I'll, this just popped in my head. Um, I think that prom or homecoming, I think that homecoming is uh, like where you you elect a homecoming queen and all that. I just think that that's just an outdated idea. And it celebrates really negative kind of stereotypes about women, right? Um, and I know in my high school that traditionally the only girl that ever got elected homecoming queen was whoever was sleeping with the captain of the football team. And that was true for years and years and years, right? And I'm like, that's just a stupid tradition, right? Now, I know probably some of you are getting angry at that. This is my opinion, that's okay, right? So I could write about this whole homecoming queen ritual, right? And talk about, you know, what I, you know, what I thought about it, why I thought about it as being negative, and then look at the participants and how I thought, right? So I could talk about the captain of the football team and how he bullied everybody to vote for his girlfriend. And then I could talk about his girlfriend and how she behaved, right? And then, I mean, it was just, you know, so I could talk about how they reflected aspects of this tradition that had made it so negative that any good that had been part of it just didn't seem to be there anymore. And it was all about sex and power and who was pretty and who wasn't and all of that, right? And so then it was like, all it was was just a way to make people feel bad about themselves or they felt good about themselves at the expense of others, right? And so now it's supposed to be a humorous essay, right? So as I'm saying this, I'm thinking, could I make this humorous? I don't know. I That might be so dark that I don't know that I could make it humorous. So as I'm writing, as I'm free writing, as I'm planning this essay, you know, that would be a totally fine essay, except could I make it funny? So maybe I can't. Maybe I have to choose something different because I don't know that I could write it in a humorous way. I would have to see, you know, do I think that is such a serious topic that if I try to be funny about it, I'm cheapening what I think is a really you know, a negative experience for a lot of people. So I'm going to say, you know, that's an essay for a different subject. I can't do number one with humorous with that topic. So I need to go back 
and look at something else that um, that's a ritual or a ceremony or celebration that I can be maybe funny about, right? But again, you can see how I could take that and I could look at the different participants and I could make an, like, what do they exemplify with this ritual that I want to talk about, right? So each one of them is going to be a different example. And so that's how you would do that where I have three different examples instead of one long one, right? And then of course your conclusion, you're gonna just reinforce that main point. What's the takeaway that you want your audience to understand about that, right? So exemplification, here's the special organizational problem. If you do not select your examples carefully and arrange them effectively, your essay can become a thesis statement followed by a list or by 10 or 15 brief choppy paragraphs, right? So again, you want to develop really full examples, right? You don't want to just chop, 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 and make one long list of, of different aspects, right? Well, so here's this example, and here's this example, and here's this example. No, you want, long, you want an example that you can really develop, right? So that is a challenge there, right? So again, you either want to, that best example that you can put into one paragraph, or you could put several examples into one paragraph because they're all related together, right? So if I wanted to say, let's, let's go back to that ritual paragraph. And I wanted to say that, you know, one funny thing about a sweet six, let's say sweet 16 birthday, right? How it can be fun, right? Uh, and so maybe one paragraph is going to be about, you know, all of the, the, the crazy friends, right? That add to the hype, right? So I might give multiple examples of crazy friends of the 16 year old, right? Uh, I don't have to give just one. I'm gonna talk about maybe two or three. And ideally they're not gonna, it's gonna be a range of examples, not the same type of person over and over again, because that's boring. But I'm gonna say, well, here's one type of crazy friend, you know, the best friend that, you know, blah, 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 blah. But then here's the other crazy type of friend, right? So I can give multiple examples in one paragraph. Right. But I want to make sure that I'm developing each of those enough that they come alive to my reader. Right. Um, the next paragraph is about arranging. So, again, you can do things chronologically. You can do an uh, order of com 